right. Welcome to the last section in Creative Programming 1. We have covered a ton of stuff, and um, this last topic is one that I really love, and I hope you see as a really powerful tool as you move forward in programming called object-oriented programming. Um, we're going to do a little bit of coding here, but before we dive in, I think it's going to be worth just talking a little bit about what the heck is OOP? What is object-oriented programming? Um, why might we want to use it? And then we'll build a little simple example together first. Um, and then in the later demos, um, you'll see how we can apply it to doing the same kinds of things that we've been doing. Um, so object-oriented programming, um, oh, I should note all the the stuff we're about to talk about is in this page as well, which is on the class GitHub site. I'll put a link to that. Um, so if you want to like look through it at your leisure or more in more detail, um, you can definitely check that out. But object-oriented programming is a different way of conceiving of kind of organizing our code. So in the past, um, we've created, you know, if you had a bunch of uh, shapes on screen, you had a separate, then you would need to have separate X and Y variables for them, dimension variables, all that kind of stuff. Maybe, maybe you would have a list of those, um, you know, all the X's, all the Y's, all the diameters, whatever. But you can see it starts to get really, really messy. Um, but what object-oriented programming lets us do is create a template. So instead of doing that, we can create this kind of generic version of an object. Um, it's got parameters to it like X, Y, diameter, that kind of thing. Um, and then we can create um, individual instances of that object um, in our code. And this becomes really powerful for things like games, simulations, even animation and interactive projects where you want to have lots of things on the screen. Um, this is going to be really, really helpful way to do that. Um, Object-oriented programming dates back uh, quite a ways. Um, the term for this and a lot of the ideas come from Alan Kay, who was a really important person in the history of computing. Um, I will put also a link here to a really cool article on Stack Exchange about kind of the history of that a little bit. I, I find it really fascinating to see where that came from. Um, but before we dive into the editor to do stuff, let's just talk a little bit about um, kind of an overview of some of the terminology that we're going to be talking about. So object-oriented programming, or OOP, and you'll often see uh, that we just don't have enough room on screen, so I'll call it OOP, um, or OO programming. Um, like I said, is a way of thinking about a template, the sort of a generic platonic definition of something, um, and then we can create specific instances of that object. Um, and in JavaScript and also many other languages, um, we call this template a class. Um, so you'll see this in Java, Python, many other languages. And then the class has four things. And um, these are terms that we haven't talked much about yet. So I think it's worth talking about those now. The first is it's always going to have a name. Um, and that name is going to be uppercase. The reason it's uppercase is so that we can differentiate a class from a traditional variable. So name, I mean, that kind of makes sense. Um, we're also going to have a constructor. And you can think of this kind of like the setup function for our class. It's a piece of code that runs once when we create a new um, iteration of that class. And um, yeah, and one of the things that we do inside that constructor is um, we define properties or uh, variables. Um, and these variables are going to be internal to the class. We can set them, we can change them, update them, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then we have methods, which are functions that live inside of our class. And this lets us then, again, you know, make changes. We can um, manipulate our properties or our variables. We can, um, so common ones might include, uh, properties might include, you know, um, position like X and Y, size, color, and then the functions might include um, you know, a move function or a display function where we use the drawing commands to then um, display it on screen. Um, so before we uh, really do like a lot of code uh, with this stuff and use drawing commands and all that, um, let's think about like a real world example that we're all familiar with and we can, we can work with. Um, and that's going to be pizza. 
Now, I assume everyone watching this has eaten pizza before. If you haven't, um, that's kind of fascinating. I uh, would love to hear from you about why you've never had pizza. That's awesome. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of assume we've all had pizza or at least are aware of what pizza is. Um, so let's think about before, you know, and I think this is really helpful always to do before you jump into code is think about what um, what properties our class needs to have. What are our variables? And there's lots of lots of them we could think of. But imagine you've started your own pizza place, Jeff's Pizza or whatever. Um, <laughs> that doesn't sound so great. Um, but uh, let's think about what things, you know, we're building this like pizza app. So we probably want to have an order number a size, you know, is it 12 inch, 16 inch, whatever, um, if it's been delivered or not, and a list of toppings. And so this is going to let us kind of think about, you know, what things need to go into this class. Some of these variables are going to be unique. So the order number, if all goes well, should always be different for every pizza. And then some of them may be shared. So we might have lots of 16 inch pizzas, or we might have some that have the same list of toppings applied to them. Um, you'll also, you know, you're starting to maybe think about what variable types go with these, and I think that makes sense too. Um, so let's go ahead and define a couple of pizzas, and I've got, I've already done that, and I'll just paste that in here. So here's the first pizza. We're programmers, so it starts with order number zero. It's a 16-inch pizza. It has not been delivered yet, and it contains my two favorite toppings of all time, which is sausage and onions on a pizza. And then um, we can make another pizza here. Order number one, it's 12 inch. It has been delivered. And sadly, it has no toppings on it. Um, so, and like I said, you know, I'm already starting to think about, okay, order number is a number, size is a number, delivered is a Boolean, um, and toppings is a list of strings. And this is helpful as I start to think about how I would jump into code for this. Um, so we're going to keep in mind this idea of the name, constructor, properties, and methods. Let's jump into the P5.js editor and um, see how we might create this class. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go below setup and draw, just like other functions, um, our class needs to exist outside of those things. And I'm going to call my class pizza. Um, reminder, always uppercase for this. And then um, we're going to make our constructor. Now there's two ways that we can do this. One would be just um, with no arguments here. Um, but we can also add arguments just like a regular function. And I think, as I'm thinking about my pizza app or whatever, um, I'm probably going to want to send in the order number, the size, and the list of toppings to my, to my class. And then we need to store those, or we need to list our properties, our variables. Um, and it, we do it like this. Now, this seems a little funky. This is different than we how, how we've done it before. For one thing, you'll notice there's no let here. Um, we don't use let inside of our constructor. Instead, we use this term, this dot, and then the name of our variable. And this is weird and confusing, and you're going to forget this all the time, um, and you're going to get errors, and that, that happens to me too, for sure. Um, so you can think of this as being um, variables that are internal to your class. So they're not global variables accessible to your whole program. Um, they're not arguments being sent in. This means it's part of pizza. It's part of this pizza class. So this dot order number creates this variable, and then we set it to the, the value that's been sent in. We could do the same thing for size and toppings like this. Now we can also, you know, we know from our uh, template that we created that we also want to know whether the pizza has been delivered. Um, so we can also create variables like this. So we can hard code, we can type in those values here. Um, in this case, I know it's our pizza when it gets created. Remember constructor runs um, when we create an instance, a new pizza, for example. Um, I can't deliver a pizza before it's been made, so I know it's always going to be false. We'll see in some upcoming examples where we can use random numbers here, stuff like that um, works really well too. So that's our um, basic pizza constructor. 
Um, let's make a pizza. So in, I'm going to do this in setup here. Uh, I'm going to create a variable called pizza one, and I can make it just like this new pizza. That's it. It's, so it's kind of like um, an image where an image is an object with a bunch of pixels and other stuff associated with it. I can give it a name. In this case, um, I know I need these arguments here so we can make, um, this is order number zero, 16, and let's have it include sausage and onions like that. And what's really cool here is then I can make another pizza just like this. It's going to be order number one, 12 inch, no toppings. And just like that, I've made a second pizza. I could do this over and over. I could use a for loop and make hundreds of pizzas with random parameters. Um, and you can see why this is really, really powerful. I don't have to keep track of pizza one order number, pizza two order number, or like big lists and all this stuff. Um, and it's really easy for me to see how stuff is working too. Um, cool, we just made two pizzas. How easy is that? Um, now, let's say we wanna access some of the values for uh, say pizza one. We can do that using dot syntax. And we've used this before. So if we uh, created images, we might say img dot width, um, something like that. Um, and this is a really similar idea. In fact, an image in p5.js is a class. So I could do console dot log, oops, dot log, pizza one dot delivered, and it should print false because it hasn't been delivered yet. We can see that down here in the console. Super. Um, and we can also modify variables this way. So I can say pizza one dot delivered, oops, delivered equals true. And then we can print this. And now we can see that it's been set to true. Super cool. Um, great. Now we'll remember the last thing that we um, need. Well, we don't strictly need it, but we're you're going to want to have um, is methods. These are functions that go within our class. So let's say I want to create a function called add topping. I want to be able to add toppings to my pizza. Maybe, um, you know, after the customer orders it, they're like, ah, I really want to have anchovies on my pizza or whatever. Um, and this will allow you to modify it. So down below the constructor, but still inside my class, I'm going to create this add topping. And then as an argument, I want to be able to send in what topping. So I'm going to say topping. Now you'll notice that I don't use the word function inside here. Um, so it's kind of like this, or you know, like let is left off. In the same way in JavaScript, we um, in a class you don't use the word function. We just name the function, um, and that's it. So if I want to add two toppings, remember toppings is a list. Um, I want to access um, this variable. So I say this dot toppings dot push, which allows us to add to a list topping. Now you could come up with lots of other um, methods here. You know, maybe you could do one that sets it to be delivered or something like that. Um, but then let's go ahead and we'll do again console.log pizza two. Let's print the list of toppings for pizza two, which is an empty list. There's nothing in there. And then we could use dot syntax again, except in this case, we then run a function. So pizza two dot add uh, topping. Let's add uh, green peppers. That, and then we can print the result. And we should see now it was an empty list. Now it's funny, it's, it's not, doing quite what we want here. It should have printed the empty list and then this list with stuff in it, but that's okay. We know we know what's going on here. Um, and then we could add more toppings to it, you know, if you wanted to, for example, we could add mushrooms or whatever. Cool. Um, so that's kind of the, that's kind of it. Our class, remember it has a name, always capitalized. It has a constructor, which is like our setup that runs once when we create a new um, instance of this object, in this case, a new pizza. It's got properties, which are variables. Um, we use this to refer to uh, variables inside the class. 
Um, those can be passed as an argument or preset here in the constructor. And then we have methods, functions that we create inside of our class um, that allow us to do all kinds of stuff. Um, now, this isn't super exciting because we're just printing stuff to the console. In our next example, we're going to um, start using this to draw stuff and you'll see um, how we can kind of build on that in the subsequent demos um, to do some really cool stuff that would be super tricky to do or kind of impossible to do otherwise.